the swing beckons empty inviting but i can only gaze with longing eyes it creaks and sighs as if to mourn the millions of children like me for whom its joys are forbidden concern about child labor has always been a part of india's social and national consciousness however being complex and multifaceted child labor has proved to be a pervasive problem inherent in the cycle of poverty unemployment and illiteracy it is estimated that almost 6% of the total child population of india falls under the category of child labor over the last two decades india has made great progress in implementing measures which benefit children the government is now taking a committed and uncompromising stand to combat child labor in the country a nationwide campaign has been launched to sensitize society against child labor behind this massive effort are ministries departments and agencies of the union government concerned departments of the state governments and union territories international agencies and non governmental organizations the revolution is taking place in the cities towns and villages across india children are being pulled out of work and sent back to school ministry of labor cannot work in isolation because elimination of child labor is just is not and cannot be the concern of one single ministry or department of government of india or the state it has to be con it has to be the concern of the whole nation actually it has to be a global concern we need first a positive and proactive international consciousness for elimination of child labor we need a positive and proactive national consciousness with the involvement of all sections of the society teachers students women youth policy formulators policy implementers representatives of the people mps mlas mlcs the commitment of the successive governments in india is clearly reflected in articles 23 24 39e and f and article 45 of the constitution of india the indian initiatives are supported by the government of india and also helped by international organizations like international labor organization or ilo united nations development project or undp and the united nations children's fund or unicef the work has been not simply to produce these results per se but to share these results with the partners particularly with the government uh, leaders um who are pioneering this this work uh, across uh, india making sure that proper replication of these experiences is actually undertaken uh one thing important in the role of unicef is that uh it assumes that government is the huge uh, partner in this and without the government we will not be able to move this program across the board so producing those uh, lessons producing those holistic approaches are an important part of the constellation but it's a huge constellation as many as 10 labor laws have been enacted at the federal level india is a permanent founding and non elective member of ilo 6 out of 20 ilo conventions have been ratified in fact in 1992 India was the first signatory to the International Program for Elimination of Child Labor, better known as IPEC. 
Since then, 150 programs have been implemented under IPEC, benefiting close to 200,000 children. At the moment, India has the largest ILO IPEC program from any country in the world. Um, it's a jointly funded program by the Government of India and by the United States Department of Labor. Um, we call it the Indus Child Labor Program. That is a program that specifically addresses the most hazardous forms of child labor. And they have been identified and in the 20 districts in four states in India, um, that program works very directly in close consultation and collaboration with the NCLP as well as with the Education for All program in identifying these children, taking them out of work and placing them in the schools and making sure that after they've been through the bridging schools they find a place in the regular government schools. India's judiciary has played an important role in the battle against child labor. In the 1980s, the Supreme Court facilitated a more dynamic, multi-dimensional use of the legal process by opening the courts to public interest litigations. This made it easier for individuals or groups to move the courts on behalf of the poor. The MC Mehta versus the State of Tamil Nadu case of 1986 is a prime example. In its judgment in 1996, the Supreme Court found the employment of children in the match industries of Shivakasi to be a matter of gross violation of Article 24, which prohibits employment of children in factories, etc. The judgment underlined the need for not only pulling out children from work, but also for compensation of 20,000 rupees per child, alternative employment to an adult member of the family, and the creation of a child labor rehabilitation come welfare fund. A very clear and landmark judgment is there. It has shown the way to the government of India as to how to rehabilitate the children working in the hazardous industries, how to collect money and as to how to create a child welfare fund at district, state and national level and, uh, and what measures should be adopted to educate children and rehabilitate them. In the distance, a bird sings and soars into the blue. For a moment, my heart grows wings, but I am reminded of bitter things. Across India, efforts are on to break the vicious cycle of illiteracy, poverty and unemployment. For this, the Government of India has initiated various schemes for employment generation, training of youth and development of women and children at the national level. In addition, the Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan, or the Education for All Drive, has been launched to ensure the right of free access, retention and participation of all children up to the age of 14 in formal schooling in keeping with the Article 45 of the Indian Constitution. Dealing with child labor is in essence a larger development agenda. And therefore we've been working on various aspects that go over and above what is happening in the child in the National Child Labor Program to try to reinforce that program and to make it even more relevant. And these are measures that concentrate on parents, increase their capacity to earn a living by working with women in self-help groups, uh, something that works 
well and is an established practice in, in, in the country, in, in many parts. Work with parents to open their scope for self-employment so they can earn a living um, either on their own or by increasing their skills so they can find a job um, in paid employment or at least earn a living by working for somebody else. And developing skills programs or skills development programs that are relevant for the children who have learned the basic skills that are being taught in primary schools. The National Child Labour Policy adopted in 1987 marked a paradigm shift in the approach of the government towards combating child labour. The policy laid specific stress on general development programmes alongside creating a constitutional and legislative action plan. But the most important component of the policy is the NCLPs or National Child Labour Projects. The National Child Labour Projects, or NCLP, provide for rehabilitation of children withdrawn from hazardous work through education, nutrition, health checkups, and skill training. The number of projects has gone up from 9 to 150 in January 2004 and is to be increased to 250 in the 10th plan. Nearly 250,000 children have been withdrawn from work and rehabilitated through more than 30,000 special schools run under the National Child Labour Projects. I find there has been gains over the last few years from 87 at the initiation of the NCLP. I believe there are building blocks from which we could make this program even more efficient, even more effective, scaling up. Our role in there would be to produce holistic grassroots level experiences that can be promoted uh, and replicated. Our other role would be to ensure that in this sort of perspective nationally that the role of administrators, local NGOs, as well as uh, a, a other civil society partners beyond the employers and the families and children are fully uh, factored in because we feel the experience tells us they are very, very important. The southern Indian state of Kerala has laid specific stress on primary education for more than two and a half decades now. In 1989, the Government of India launched the Total Literacy Campaign in Ernakulam district. It was meant for a target group of 200,000 in the 6 to 45 age group. The experiment was replicated in the 13 remaining districts of the state and eventually all over India in more than 400 districts. Today, Kerala is 100% literate and almost free of child labour. And yet, my pulse gladdens to think that there are some in this world that can take me to the skies, wings unfettered, unfurled. It's only when you are in school, we know that they can be protected. And you know, school is a great institution and I think we should all participate in seeing that children go to school and making that institution happen and believing that it is possible. A Raymond Magsaysay recipient, Shanta Sinha, founded the Mammedipuri Venkat Rangaya Foundation or MV Foundation with the support of the Government of India. The foundation started special schools under the National Child Labour Project in the Rangareddy district of the southern Indian state of Andhra Pradesh. It has been successfully working towards eliminating child labour in one of the worst affected regions in India. Today, the effort has spread over eight districts in the state. Using the innovative camp approach, the MV Foundation has transformed the lives of a quarter of a million children. Camps 
such as this one for girls, operating out of an abandoned poultry farm, house children through the summer months. Children come from neighboring villages to attend the camps, which prepare them for regular schooling through specially designed bridge courses. A bridge course was not in isolation of the community. That you will have to first of all mobilize community to bring the child to a bridge course. Then you have to provide bridge not only for the child, you have to provide the bridge for the parent to accept that the children will not be working, provide a bridge for the schools to accept that older children will come. So the bridge course was for the society as a whole. It's, 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 it's meant for the child, but I think it's meant for everybody to accept that they will no longer employ children. In the Adilabad district of the state, a tribal boy called Deepak Tipote, once a child worker in the agricultural sector, fought against opposition from his family to attend a bridge school run by the MV Foundation. He was so inspired by the benefits of receiving an education that he began teaching at the village primary school, which had not had a teacher for several years. He is now a government-appointed teacher, thanks to a petition by the villagers to the district administration. Today, Tibote divides his time between teaching 40 children and studying for his senior secondary exams. जैसा कि मुझे भी फाउंडेशन में ले गए उसी तरह का उनको मोटिवेशन करके फिर भी मैं पांच छह बच्चे के यहाँ के जैसा मुझे ले गए तो मैं ना ये अपने वॉलेंटियर्स लाए नहीं लाए वो वॉलेंटियर्स नहीं भी बोले तो भी भाई जो है सो वो बच्चों को मोटिवेशन करके फिर भी कैंप में मैं जेन करा ऐसा एक मेरा उद्� the Center for Rural Education and Development Action, or CRIDA, is another successful Indian initiative funded by the United Nations Development Program, or UNDP. Operating in the Mirzapur region of eastern Uttar Pradesh, this NGO has managed to pull close to 60,000 children out of work. It runs bridge schools in remote villages in three blocks of the district which is also the largest carpet weaving center in India. The Trida effort initially faced stiff resistance from carpet manufacturers, but the NGO was able to mobilize support from the community. Today, many of the villages are child labor free and children, including girls, attend formal school. he will be holding an engineering diploma, the first one to do so from a population of more than 300,000. About 10 years ago, Atma Ram was weaving carpets for less than $5 a month. His world changed when Krita volunteers convinced his parents to send him to one of the bridge schools and eventually to regular school. No wonder Atma Ram is now a role model for children in his village. शिक्षा से फायदा है जैसे कि हम पढ़ लिख लिए तो अपने परिवार के परिवार के विकास करेंगे फिर इसके बाद इस क्षेत्र का भी विकास कर सकते हैं और जो है आप दोनों के साथ साथ आगे बढ़ सकते हैं हम आप देखे देखे पीछे बड़े लड़के भी पढ़ सकते हैं इन जयपुर राजस्थान Many children were employed in the extremely hazardous gem cutting industry. The government of India has been providing support to NGOs in the region through the Grants in Aid scheme. Working closely with the regional national child labor project as well as the state government, the NGOs have managed to motivate conservative Muslim parents to send their children to school with help of volunteers of the same community. The volunteers conduct periodical surveys and persuade parents to send their children to school. This has helped more than 50,000 children in and around Jaipur.
What is noteworthy is that the NGOs have managed to convince parents to send their girl children to school. Today, almost half the children attending regular school are girls. In Central India, the state government started the Education Guarantee Scheme in the year 1996. The state government pledged to provide a school within a distance of one kilometer for every child in the rural areas within a period of 90 days. All it required was a petition from village representatives. A parent-teacher association responsible for running the schools was formed in each of the villages. In less than a decade, the literacy level in the state has increased by almost 20%. So successful is this scheme that it received international acclaim in Kuala Lumpur in 1998. Schemes such as the Education Guarantee Scheme clearly highlight the importance of community participation in the successful implementation of government initiatives. Another example of this can be seen in Himachal Pradesh. Child labor in this picturesque state is at its minimum, second only to Kerala. Like in Madhya Pradesh, this is mainly due to proactive community intervention. Even in far-off villages where conditions are tough, schools maintain a very high retention ratio. Each village has a parent-teacher association which is part of the village council. The members meet regularly to ensure the smooth functioning of their schools. For example, if there is a shortage of teachers, the association not only expedites the recruitment of teachers, but also has its members double up as part-time teachers. Clearly, decision-making is faster and implementation more efficient. I close my eyes and glide through the air. The wind in my hair, the sun warms my skin. I am happy and free within. The times are changing and this is reflected in the fact that the government's policies have created a great deal of awareness and sparked off social change even in the remotest corners of India. Deepak Tibote and Atma Ram are not alone. There are many like them who are passing on the benefits that they have received. They are the instruments of change and the government's goal of eradicating child labor by the year 2010 seems more achievable than ever before. The playground is not silent anymore. The symphony of laughter echoes everywhere. This is the symphony of fetters and shackles breaking down. This is the symphony of childhood, the joy of freedom.